Hi, James Gurney here. I'm an illustrator for Scientific American Magazine. I just got a call from the art director to do a story on tyrannosaurs. Not T-Rex, the king of predatory dinosaurs, but some of his other cousins that aren't as well known. So let me show you a couple of the sketches I've been doing. I think it would be fun to have a big U Tyrannus coming in from the upper left and then have a couple of Dai Longs down here trying to defend their kill from the big guy who's coming in to steal it. I do a variety of sketches in color, but the one that connects is this one showing the competition between two predators. And while I'm working on it, a red-shouldered hawk in my backyard is dismembering a mouse, but looking around for bigger hawks that might steal it from him. To gather references, I look in my old-school image file, not only for photos, but for outdoor paintings that I've done of forests that would be similar to the ones in the Lower Cretaceous. I do a color sketch to work up the concept. And with that, approved by the paleontologist Stephen Broussat and the art director at Scientific American, I work up the drawing in pencil on illustration board. This will be the title spread in the magazine, so I need to make sure it fits the layout and has room for the type. Before I start the final oil painting, I need to seal the illustration board using acrylic matte medium mixed with some modeling paste to give texture. The oil paint goes on fairly thinly at first with a big bristle brush. Then I zero in on the face of the U Tyrannus. I gotta get him right when I start out because he's the engine of the whole story. I mix up some colors for the forest and paint it straight away, going to finish effect immediately and covering the whole surface all at once. This kind of painting is called area by area painting or window shading. It's like putting down pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and it's only possible because I did an exact color study first and also was basing this on color sketches I did out in nature. You know, at this point I'm starting to paint in the dinosaurs and I've got this little DeLong in there, um, but I'm not too sure I like him with his mouth open. I might want to paint his mouth closed. I often notice that there's a tendency to paint dinosaurs with their mouths open a lot, but if you look at real animals in the wild, they don't really open their mouth that much unless they're displaying or attacking. And if I was any one of those three little dinosaurs, I'd want to get out of there as fast as possible. I look at actual feet from turkeys and other specimens to get ideas for textures, like the feathers on this big dinosaur. And in the end, the painting's done after about a week of painting. I bring the painting in to New York City to deliver to Mike Mrak of Scientific American, and he comes up with the graphic design approach to make it work on the magazine page. There's a lot more to this behind-the-scenes story that I'd love to share with you, so I've made a 40-minute long full-length uh, behind-the-scenes video. The full-length video will include an expedition into the forest to record some plein air studies. We'll learn more about the dinosaurs and the various brushes that I used in the paintings. We'll also look at paints and priming materials and mediums. In addition to all that, the full-length video will spotlight a second painting, which I did for the cover of the magazine. This is the Xianzhosaurus, discovered by the story's author, Stephen Broussat. And we'll start with the color sketches done in gouache and the comprehensives in casein, the pencil underdrawing, and then the underpainting before the final oil rendering. I'll talk about how to get realistic eyes and textures and the whole process of doing these two paintings from start to finish. Okay, you ready? Tell me when. Rolling. Okay, rotating slowly. And a little faster. Tilting. Faster. Faster. Oh, faster, faster. Hold four seconds. 
Okay, I think we got it. Ready to go. <laughs> okay, too hard. Okay, let's break. Let's go.